good morning. Hey, um, we're starting to report that today feels mucky. Like I woke up and I feel like, bleh, like uncomfortable, uh, uh, agitated, um, all those feelings. And I'm, I'm getting used to expressing those feelings because for years, For years, to simply express a feeling like that was to be... Our language was policed. The way we expressed ourselves was policed. But the way... It, it would never see itself as being policed. It, it was instead being sort of pushed in a different direction. The best example of that is the journal that we published. So, you know, 20 different people would write little articles for the journal. But then everything you wrote would be edited and edited and edited explicitly so the final product sounded like it was written by one person. That was the whole idea. The whole idea was not an expression of the diversity of the group. It was an expression of the one voice of the group. That's by its nature authoritarian. And that's how it felt. And I remember being a part of, a, of the people who, there were people who expressed having trouble with that. And of course, I belittled and um, and uh, judged them for feeling that way. They weren't allowed to feel that way. They were only allowed to submit. It's hard for me to digest because I was so 100%. And every minute of every day right now, I am reeling from this idea that I am dismissible and erasable and replaceable, which I am. The system is set up to do that. Wow. I'm watching a lot of uh, videos about people leaving very exclusive communities, and at least, at least in those cases, <laughs> they're explicitly excommunicated or disfellowshipped. And this one, it's just a weird feeling of like, well, why did you do that? What's the matter with you? So enraging. One of the things that I'm really noticing right now is um reflecting on is there's a lot of really brave and beautiful community activism going on right now in light of the Black Lives Matter um, movement, unrest, whatever you want to call it. And there's activism going on right around the block where the Sufis live. There's a garden, there's uh, a center, there's uh, a really powerful trans woman who's power, who's um, doing a lot of important activism and posting positively. And I'm looking at these the social media stuff and the marches and all this stuff, and I'm like, wow, the, you know what? The Sufis are completely uncooperative, absolutely uncooperative. Um, and then in one of these photos, I saw one of the, the African-American Muslim men who's tried to work with us before. And this is the complete truth. If they don't do it exactly the guru's way, if they don't communicate the guru's way, he does not cooperate. He will not cooperate. And then he blames everyone else. What, the way he frames it is that he has a standard. And they have to meet him that way. And he acts like a snubbed little brat. What a shame. There's so much important good work to do right now. And the Sufis do great work, but they do it in an exclusionary, isolated way. I'm just so struck by the beauty of people right now and their efforts. Really struck by it. And, and, and really struck by the un, inability and unwillingness of a community that purports to be for everyone when in fact it refuses to collaborate. And I'm so relieved to be out of that environment and to feel that activism come back again. Very few of us had vote, been voting. Now I get to vote. It's such a painful place to be in to be that isolated. Oof. 
forgive me, I, I'm, I'm, I might repeat these stories, but I'm telling them just to, to tell myself and make sense of them. And I know I'll have to do this a thousand times, a thousand times to do this. So I appreciate you listening.